Colin uh, uh, was talking about it. So we come up with a partial orders and with the trees. So here it's a big confusion matrix on the same experiments that uh, Colin talked about, where uh, on a little different twist we arrived to the, to the, the result here, where we were looking for it. We find out this grouping of uh, directions very consistently. And it was robust from visual stimulus because the sentence either were presented visually, but for some other, other subjects they were presented auditorily. And this, the, the separation between cities and countries wasn't robust. From, it was working well in some uh, subjects and not in others, but the directions were consistent with the, the remark we had before, and we thought a lot about that. What is it just the length of the world? As best as we could test with the data we had, we tried with uh, some combination and measuring the, the length. It's, it looks there is an effect beyond the, the length of the world. But the remark was right. I mean, there is those direction was a particular in length and in number of syllables. But the effect was pretty robust. And we don't have that on the cities and the countries, or not so much. And uh, we live at that. We need to more data. But we, at, at the end, I will show some more data. Um, just one thing, uh, we did at Mali and uh, Russia. So here are some trees. So we compare uh, differently than uh, Colin. Uh, work from uh, 1955 on uh, perception. So this is speech. So you present to subjects uh, uh, phonemes and you put noise and distortions. And you see at which threshold the probability they confuse. Experiment. We found a lot of similarities. Most in the intersection, it's harder to see. Just how long to write? Five years? Six years? No, yes. <laughs> so, uh, we were thinking what to do next, and uh, well, you know, Pat, most of you are a lot longer than I do. And we didn't go one small step. So the funny thing is, about a couple of years ago, I was excited about, and I proposed to Pat to do an experiment where we record the brain waves of a subject listening to an extract of the uh, American Constitution that most American at least know the first paragraph. And Pat was skeptical that it would work, and and then he proposed something. Far beyond. <laughs> At least my experiment was controlled. I could know which time the words were presented. And we jumped to something totally uncontrolled, uh, where we record the uh, brain activity of uh, couples in therapy. And Michelle and Margot, that I don't see. And so we record uh, everything, uh, the sound, the video, and the EEG. Uh, it has been an engineering challenge these last two years to make that work. Um, I don't go into details, but it was challenging, and it's not the challenge is not finished. With about now, we have about 50 hours of recording uh, with uh, six couples. And we even starting to do some Vietnamese. I don't know how to transcribe it. So, just before to, we can even start to analyze this data, we had a lot to do. Uh, the first thing, we need the transcription, because it's not controlled. So, we need to know the, the words that have been said by the three speakers, so you have the therapist, the, uh, and the couple. And we need to know the onset of the word at rather great accuracy. 
uh, to, to do any work on the EEG. So we had to start developing the tooth, and uh, we wrote a program to do it manually. But it, it turns out it takes 100 hours to transcribe one hour of experiment, what ended up being costly. So now we are uh, turned into uh, writing um, speech recognition software to try to make it a little easier. And this is still going on. Then the, uh, uh, the therapists themselves uh, code the emotion, uh, watching the video and listening to the video. Um, the number of emotions change uh, uh, quite a bit. So we start with 19 and it proved to be a challenge. And now we back down to 4. Uh, we, uh, the therapist uh, can uh, code for several things, uh, the level of intensity of the emotion, the confidence they have themselves on the coding, the direction of the emotion, is the subject expressing an emotion uh, to himself, like sadness, or towards the other, like anger, and uh, Pat uh, wants to do a lot of work on insight. And uh, logistically, this takes about 30 hours to go to one hour of work. And this, there is no way to do it automatically. So, quickly, some results. Uh, we, do, we are very preliminary. We started analyzing the speech and the EEG a few months ago. The EEG a few weeks ago. So, on the speech, we actually able to classify uh, emotion quite well, better than this curve. This is just an example, just on frequency arguments. And you can see here, this is the onset of the word you, or all the use you have in several sessions. And uh, you can see, for example, for the second format, we have a significant rate. Uh, less than 50 milliseconds after the onset of the world. Um, so we have some hope for the speech, and then we hope to use the speech as a crutch to have some handle on how to analyze the EEG. So just to finish, so that's the first analysis I did of the EEG. So the EEG is a big problem here because of the size of the data. It's two times 128 channels. Um, but we have one finding that's quite interesting, even if it's preliminary, and it's, uh, it links with uh, what we heard earlier about mirroring. We found that it's actually easier to classify for example, in this case, the EEG of the male or the emotions in the EEG of the males, when we are looking at the emotion expressed by the female subject, more than his own emotions. <coughs> and uh, this is the case, so this is the EEG of the male subject, but the, uh, the triggers here are the emotion coded as they were expressed by the woman subject. It goes fast, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you see the classification going, at the end it would be easier. Other thing you can see, this uh, set of data is incredibly noisy because the experiment is totally uncontrolled. The subjects, they can move, they talk, they throw, they don't fight so far. But treating an, uh, the, the work of just cleaning this data is an open problem. We probably will have a couple of papers just on techniques on how to clean this data. So you see the classification is going to last another 10 seconds. So most of the noise you see are from the muscle activity of the face, the scalp, and the jaw. So, and it's not just, but you have two sources. When the subject is talking, obviously the jaw is moving. But for example, like Ekman uh, showed, 
uh, when uh, people express emotion, they use the muscle of the face. They frown, they dance, they jaw, they uh, blink, uh, and all that uh, uh, contaminates the data. We are not going to, to treat it as pure noise. We may analyze it, actually it's interesting to analyze. But we are going to work with, I started, to how to separate, how to know that the classification I, showed, I just showed you is something coming from the brain, or is it coming from the muscle, or is it coming from something else? And it probably will take us a few years to get there. Thank you very much.